Hey, this is JT. Welcome to my house and welcome to Body Weight Strength. In this video, I'm going to give you my one year with photos carnivore diet um, update. And for those of you who have not watched my older videos, I started a carnivore diet due to some autoimmune conditions. I'm going to link to the earlier videos in the notes to this video so you can click. You can go watch that. I'm not going to rehash that here. Needless to say, the autoimmune conditions went to full remission. I did really well on a carnivore diet and I started out at 185 pounds and I had some body fat. I was a little bit bloated and when I dropped the plants, the constant gas and bloat went away. I started to lean out and after about two months, a little over two months, I went from 185 to 176 and I was very lean. Now when I got to 176, I was super happy with the results, um, but I wanted to test gaining mass or basically hypertrophy for someone who's already lean on a low carbohydrate or ketogenic diet. Now, majority of times when somebody is already fairly lean and they want to gain muscle mass, they're gonna include carbohydrates in their diet. And including carbohydrates makes eating a caloric excess easier. It makes food more palatable. I mean, most people watching this can probably attest to a baked potato tastes way better with butter and sour cream, noodles with cream sauce, or um, when you're adding oils, when you're adding fats to carbohydrates, you can get the calories up really quickly and the food's way more, you know, what they call hyper palatable. And it just makes eating an energy excess easier to do on a consistent basis. With that being said, carbohydrates are not required to stimulate protein synthesis or build muscle tissue. So what's often said online or thrown around when people are wanting to build muscle or on a ketogenic or carnivore diet, well, you really need to include carbohydrates, right? It's a good diet or a good approach for losing weight, but it's not good for building muscle tissue. That is false because you do not need carbohydrate in order to stimulate protein synthesis, like I mentioned, or to put on muscle mass in, in any facet. And the thing to remember is you do need insulin to sensitize the cells for nutrients to enter the cells, but that insulin does not need to come from carbohydrates. You have a basal insulin in the bloodstream you have an insulin response to ingestion of protein or amino acids, and that is enough to maximally stimulate protein synthesis. I've not seen any studies or any research that show that non-super physiological amounts of insulin make one bit of difference when it comes to protein synthesis. And so if you are on a ketogenic diet or a carnivore diet and you're wanting to build muscle, you can do it sans carbohydrates. I know because theoretically you can do it, and then I've done it myself as you can see in the photos that I, that I posted. So there are a few considerations and a few reasons why a lot of people who are on a ketogenic diet or are on a carnivore diet do not tend to or seem to build a lot of muscle mass. And we'll go over those real quick, okay? The first one is it takes years, I mean years, to build a lot, you know, a lot of muscle mass. Nobody in the absence of taking you know, exogenous hormones or, or pharmaceuticals Nobody is going to eat any kind of diet and put on, you know, 15, 20 pounds of muscle in a year. It's just not going to happen unless there's some genetic freak and that's the exception to the rule. Um, so the reality is that gaining strength and muscle mass, both for that matter, but gaining these things naturally, it's a long game and it takes a long time. And when you first start to resistance train, you're going to have what they call the noob honeymoon period or, you know, newbie gains. And basically your body's gonna respond really well to the training, but the law of diminishing returns takes effect, and the further into your training that you get, the less and less efficiently you're going to build muscle mass. So, so the first reason why you don't see people gaining a lot of muscle mass um, is just because it takes a long time, and most people have not been on a carnivore diet for a long time, and they've not been on a ketogenic diet for a long time. It can be done with both those diets, but it's gonna take some time, like I mentioned, that's number one. Number two, I see plenty of people on ketogenic diets eating inadequate protein for the purposes of optimally facilitating strength and hypertrophy adaptations. So if you're not eating optimal protein, then you're shooting yourself in the foot with regards to adapting to the training in the form of stimulating hypertrophy. If you want to get big, you got to eat protein. Pretty simple, right? So a lot of people ketogenic diet are not eating enough protein. And also I've seen some people on carnivore diets, especially OMAD. So when I did it, and I have done OMAD before, I have done one meal a day, but when I decided to switch, 
to see if I could gain mass on a carnivore diet. I did not do it OMAD. I did three meals a day. I did that in an eight to 10 hour window and I did three meals within that eight to 10 hour window. I did not do one meal a day. Um, in my view, one meal a day is just not optimal for strength, uh, not for strength, but a one meal a day is certainly not optimal for hypertrophy. That doesn't mean that you can't gain muscle mass eating one meal a day. You can, I've done it, people do it. So for sure, you can stick to one meal a day and gain some muscle, but if you get to a point where you wanna optimize for hypertrophy, one meal a day is probably not the way to do it. Um, so with that being said, a lot of people, even on a carnivore approach, may be under consuming protein. And so you wanna make sure that you get your protein intake up. And I did a video talking about where to set your protein to. I'll link to that here to keep this from getting out of hand in length. So if you want more info about how much protein you should eat, you can click and go watch that video. So like we talked about, building appreciable muscle mass takes a long time, that's number one. Number two, people are not always eating adequate protein. And number three, people are not training properly. So in order to build muscle, you actually do not need to resist and train or exercise at all if you are under consuming protein. There's plenty of research that shows that people who increase their protein intakes will actually gain lean tissue just from increasing their protein intake. So if you are on a SAD diet, standard American diet, and you switch to a carnivore diet, you're gonna probably see your health improve in various ways. One of the things that will happen is you will build lean tissue in the absence of exercise because you are now eating a higher protein diet. And so exercise is not required to build muscle. However, that adaptation is gonna happen pretty quick, right? You're going to eventually get to a point where you've gained the lean mass that you're going to gain from just protein, now you need to insert resistance training. And most people who start resistance training do not efficiently or effectively adhere to overload principles. So if you are on a keto or carnivore diet and you start resistance training, you've gotta make sure that you adhere to the principles of progressive overload, which is very simply increasing the intensity or the volume of your training over time. I'm not gonna get super into it here because I've also done videos on that. I will link to those videos in the notes you can click there, you can go check it out, you can learn all about progressive overload, but that is one of the other reasons why people do not efficiently gain strength or muscle mass on a low carbohydrate diet. And that's all that's required to build muscle and stimulate hypertrophy on a low carbohydrate diet. You need to make sure that you put the time in that it takes consistently to do it, and that is going to include adequate protein intake, it's going to include resistance training, while adhering to overload principles. And the reason I haven't talked about energy intake yet is because you can stimulate hypertrophy and build muscle in an energy deficit. What I mean by that is if you're at 20% body fat and you go, like in my first picture, you can see I had more body fat than I do now, certainly. And so when you first start dieting or first start losing body fat, if you are resistance training and you're eating high protein, you will also be adding some lean tissue, you will be stimulating hypertrophy, you will be building muscle tissue and losing fat at the same time in an energy deficit. Sometimes you hear people online say that in order to build muscle, you have to eat a caloric surplus. It's not true at all. You do not have to eat a caloric surplus to build muscle. However, the leaner that you get, the less body fat that you have, the more that it's gonna become difficult to build appreciable muscle mass while you're in that energy deficit. And so over time, what you're going to need to do is you're gonna just need to eat more overall in totality. And one of the other things that I see that inhibits people from gaining appreciable muscle mass on a carnivore or ketogenic diet, satiety on these diets tends to be high. I know it is for me. I can go and fast all day and not eat and I feel great. Um, so I sometimes have to tell myself to eat or remember to eat in order to make sure I get enough energy by the end of the day. And so very simply, I've had a lot of people DM me, a lot of people reach out. And when we go over how they're eating, they're just not eating enough food in, in totality. And so while maybe they are resistance training and applying overload principles and they've gotten some decent results, but now they're stuck, when we break it down, oftentimes it's somebody that's OMAD. And again, not that you can't build muscle or get results OMAD because you absolutely can. But if you're only eating once a day, then it becomes a little bit harder to hit your total dietary energy needs in that single meal. Hopefully that makes sense, right? If you're eating a really satiating meal, if satiety is high, if you need you know, a certain amount of food to, to basically add mass and grow, and you're eating below that in your OMAD, then you're just not gonna grow, it's not gonna happen. And so for some people, 
Um, and there's various varying reasons why people choose to do one meal a day. But for some people, you're just not gonna get it in in one meal and you're gonna have to open up that feeding window and you're gonna have to have more feedings throughout the day, whether it's two or three, however you wanna set it up. But essentially, once you've got your consistency and your protein intake down and your training with progressive overload, from there, then it's going to be energy balance that's going to matter in the long run because, well, like I mentioned, you can build muscle in an energy deficit. You're not gonna gain scale weight consistently in any energy deficit. It's just not gonna happen. And so those are the factors that you have to address to consistently gain muscle over time if you're on a ketogenic diet or a carnivore diet. Hopefully that made sense. Um, hopefully it was somewhat coherent. If you have questions, you can ask, and I always try to get to the comments and I answer everybody. So please reach out, I'm here for you. And as always, thank you for supporting Bodyweight Strength.